Okay, so in the last video we talked about carbon and its four valence electrons and why those valence electrons make carbon want to have four bonds at all times. Um, what we didn't address, however, is the stereochemistry of the carbon molecule. And what I mean by the word stereochemistry is basically how carbon compounds tend to arrange themselves in 3D space. Uh, if we were to take one of the most well-known carbon molecules, which we all know as CO2 or carbon dioxide, this is how this molecule would actually look in 3D space. If you could take a microscope and see this molecule on the atomic or molecular scale, then you would be able to see it arranged in this fashion in 3D space. Why does this compound take this arrangement, however? And, and I know I've told you that carbon always wants four bonds, and this molecule, carbon dioxide, appears to only have two. But if you look closely, these here are double bonds. All right? The central atom in this case carbon is bonded to each each oxygen surrounding it each peripheral oxygen surrounding it uh, by two chemical bonds and so this still has four bonds attached to it All right, it still satisfies that rule but once again let's explore why this this carbon compound tends to take this specific arrangement in 3d space why couldn't it have something like uh, these two oxygens uh, bonded to the central carbon atom in this fashion where instead of on the carbon dioxide molecule we have the two chemical bonds uh, the two chemical double bonds separated by a discrepancy of 180 degrees why couldn't it be something like 90 for example 90 degrees between the two oxygens bonded to the central carbon atom the way that we choose to account for these differences in chemical arrangements in 3D space is something that we call valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR for short and basically all this theory really says is that depending on the amount of uh, bonds or atoms attached to the central atom and in this case we're considering carbon the central atom uh, depending on how many atoms are attached to that central atom we can predict the geometry of this molecule and the way it chooses to arrange itself in 3D space and how do we do that? If we were to use this sphere for example, this circle with a horizontal 360 degree axis uh, coming over here and a vertical 360 degree axis coming over here forming a sphere and if we were to input a carbon molecule, or I'm sorry, a carbon dioxide molecule into this then we would see that these two oxygens can move on a 360 degree axis in this direction you know up and down or in this direction left and right like that but because of valence shell electron pair repulsion theory we know that these outside oxygens uh, have electrons surrounding them as well and so if this oxygen which we'll call oxygen number one and this oxygen which we'll call oxygen number two both have electrons uh, uh, present in their outer shells uh, floating around around these atoms then those electrons in those atoms want to repel any other electrons in its general vicinity or area so if oxygen number one has electrons floating around it and oxygen number two has electrons floating around it what we see is these electrons repel each other in a way that makes the atoms arrange themselves as far away as possible from each other so if this oxygen were to move around in 3d space any higher on a vertical axis of 360 degrees or any more left or right on, on a horizontal axis of 360 degrees what we would have is that oxygen number two's electrons will start interacting with oxygen number one's electrons in a repulsive fashion and they will go back to this linear 180 degree arrangement in 3D space. This is the farthest possible configuration that these two oxygen atoms can be in so that their electrons interfere with each other uh, as little as possible. It's like the theory of magnets. Like repels like. So if we have electrons that are negatively charged they're going to repel each other uh, because they just don't want to be around each other. Instead of two atoms bonded to a central carbon we could have uh, three. How would that uh, arrange itself in 3D space? Well, if we were to count this carbon here as the central atom, the blue atom right here, 
we have to use the same thought process as before. We have to understand that we have two axes, one vertical, one horizontal of 360 degree uh, uh, spin or, or, or free rotation or whatever you want to call it. And um, so how would these atoms arrange themselves so that they could be as far from each other as possible? Well, uh, we saw that when two atoms were bonded to the central carbon, the amount of space, either horizontal or vertical, where the atoms could be as far away from each other as possible was 180 degrees. Because if we divide 360 by 2, we get 180. Uh, in this case, we have three atoms, so uh, you know we could use the same formula. Uh, 360 divided by 3 will give us 120. And so therefore, the amount of uh, distance between each of these atoms is going to be uh, 120 degrees and it's going to be on a on a on a single plane just like this uh, this this linear compound is on a single plane uh, these atoms aren't going to go any any further up uh, on on the 360 degree vertical axis because then they start interfering with each other and we'll see that when we step up to four atoms that's going to change a little bit the each individual atom is going to be repulsed so much by its other three counterparts that it's going to go further down into this 360 degree vertical axis and further to the uh, to the to the left or right on this 360 degree horizontal axis so that we'll see uh, tetrahedral geometry and I'll explain exactly what I mean by that so something very interesting happens however when we start to uh, deal with situations in which carbon has four individual atoms bonded by single bonds onto a central carbon atom. Basically uh, what happens is the carbon will start to try to take advantage of the outside plane uh, the horizontal or vertical 360 degree axis in a fashion that will give us what we call uh, in geometry and in Vesper theory a tetrahedral uh, geometry and basically that looks something like uh, this if we get rid of everything here for a second a tetrahedral arrangement will look something like this and each and if we consider this blue right here as the carbon central atom each of these peripheral outside atoms are going to be separated by a discrepancy of 109.5 degrees and this is just a natural shape that a carbon with four bonds will take and carbon naturally wants four bonds and so this is one of the most important parts of organic chemistry is understanding why carbon compounds tend to tend to take the shape that they do and, and, and once we understand that carbon wants this uh, uh, tetrahedral geometry, we can start understanding why these molecules will arrange themselves in, 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 in 3D space uh, in ways that will either match this 109.5 degree configuration or will try as, as, as much as possible to emulate that. Uh, so basically what we get, and I want to show you the shape of it, is a tetrahedron geometry it imitates or resembles this shape as strongly as possible when we're dealing with carbon compounds with four bonds which are the, which is the norm for carbon compounds and so let me just draw it here so you can you know I'm gonna reproduce this and we're gonna draw it here we're gonna have something like this where this carbon kind of goes this way and then this one's attached to that one and then we have an attachment here and then we also have a triangle geometry here forming this tetrahedron uh, uh, shape. So now that we know that carbons take this geometry we can go a bit further and start talking about conformations uh, uh, and stereoisomers and different, different, uh, uh, different arrangement constitutional isomers of the same chemical compounds we will understand why carbon chooses to behave in the way that it does when, when interacting with other uh, uh, atoms such as hydrogen or nitrogen or oxygen or phosphorus or what have you. Uh, this is one of the fundamental concepts of organic chemistry and it must be understood uh, in order to continue learning organic chemistry. So basically uh, in the bottom, I, you know, in the description section, I put a website to, so where you can see all the geometries uh, that, that a molecule should theoretically take uh, if it has three atoms bonded to it or two atoms bonded to it or two atoms and one electron pair that's that's freely floating about uh, 
you know, basically, if you can understand this concept, then you you will have gone a long way into understanding uh, uh, a lot of a lot of the more obscure concepts uh, when we start dealing with things called uh, carbocations and 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 planar geometry of, of of the carbon compounds and and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I know I haven't explained any of that yet, but it's coming. So hopefully, uh, you know, you've enjoyed this video and. Please subscribe and rate and comment.